What's up everyone, Thralls Miller here once again. I'm Nick Rock Nick. I'm Jim and John. And we have an album review for you. So you know another one that came out on the 17th of September was the debut album from Occulst. Crepitation of Phlegathon. I don't know how to say a lot of these words. Get ready for fucking struggle. Some, right, some butchering for sure because... Yeah, <laughs> these, these guys dug deep in a thesaurus and just for spite, I think. I think so too. I think they, they were like, all right, let's see somebody review this album. Good luck well, saying these words. We're doing it. Yep. So this comes out on Everlasting Spew Records. This band formed in 2019 in Atlanta, Georgia. They have two demos and then this full length. And well, looking up their stuff on Metal Archives, holy shit, these guys are in a lot of bands. Between all three members of this band, there are about a hundred plus bands listed, I believe. It could be 100, might be 80. Still, either way, those are big numbers. So it's pretty interesting that these guys actually had time yeah, no shit. to <laughs> put a band together. Now, as for this band's sound, this is fiercely cavernous, ugly death metal. And my God, it is just a wall of evil and filth and more filth. Right from the get-go, unction of muliebris broth. That's right, and I think that's how you say it. Sounds smelly. Sounds like it was recorded in a barn, but the walls were dripping with a green or a brown yellow. ooze, yellow, All that three. smells horribly awful. I think they made a uh, makeshift studio out of bones and mud and recorded it in there super reverby and raw. I can't even really express how raw this sounds like. This is raw, like almost demo quality. Yeah, almost like it was recorded on like a tape recorder. But it's mixed well, like in terms of like how they separated up the sound. So I don't know, they, they kind of did like kind of a, a cool thing there in terms of keeping it as raw as possible, but it also sounds as though that production mattered here because I think this band has like a mission statement in terms of their approach to death metal. Make it as evil and dissonant and atonal as possible. And and props to these guys for not using any sort of like synth or electronics or anything to create this sound. Like they use the instruments to create this totally gross cavernous atmosphere. Most bands these days don't do that anymore. There's like a couple of synths just for like a little extra atmosphere, but only like maybe two spots. Yeah, well, right in the beginning, I think with the bells, yeah. I think that was one of them. And at the end of the soul's admonishment, it sounds almost like a, a wind, like behind these nasty riffs. And cavernous, creepy vocals. The vocals on this add so much atmosphere too. Like, I, I gotta give them credit. It sounds like listening to someone throw up in a sewer drain. <laughs> it's Cavernous but, as hell, of course, like very echoey, very throaty, like raw, like. But, but throw up like froth, like when you throw up beer, you know, and it, it's you just get that frothy thing, like that's what it's. Some of those might be dry too. Those might be some dry heaves. <laughs> oh man. Bloody froth. God, that sounds like it should have been a song on here. Now, if I was to compare this to bands, I mean, the biggest one, the glaring one, would be Incantation. Incantation, especially early Incantation, yep. like yep. Mortal Throne and Azarine, Onward to Golgotha, like it really has that sort of sound, especially the vocal delivery. It's very close to like Craig Pillard's just yep. super low echoey yep. voice. And of course the reverb kind of overlaps in spots, which is kind of <laughs> you know cool to keep that cavernous effect, but definitely Immolation, drawn and quartered, and a feather and bone. And also, I picked up a couple spots where it had some cannibal corpse like riffing. Yeah. And like a little bit of early suffocation. Just a. Yeah. Little bit. I mean, if you turn the reverb up on Frank, you, you might get some of this. Yep. Another sweet band uh, that, that definitely comes up is Sabbath. Yeah. There's a lot of Sabbath like moments. Like in the end of Paraphlegathonic Mind Flaying. Don't even know what that is. I don't even I don't even know what that is, but it, it gets a bit Sabbathy towards the end. Now that whole song sounds just gross. It's just sour lemons the whole way through. In fact, the breakdown just makes me want to take a shower. And breakdowns generally on here are a little bit more along the lines of like Death Doom breakdowns. Again, Incantation comes on there. Like Val Butcher of Human Folly and Tendon Pendentum. I don't know what that is either, but. 
sick, distinct Death Doom breaks, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I guess you could say this is where the melody creeps in, and I'm using the term melody Lightly. very loosely here. Even the word harmony doesn't sound right, because they do pack on some harmonies, but everything is so distant and atonal. Like I think if you're going to get any melody out of this, it's going to be at least harmonized, and it's not... Pretty. It's not pretty. Like, nothing on this album is pretty. <laughs> nothing is really designed to make, like, big hooks. Now, I do think there are some hooks, at least for, you know, death metal heads. Mm -hmm. It's in tandem pandentum, at least the one I found. It, just for a minute, you're like, is that a hook? Maybe. <laughs> I found some in Concupiscence of Frenzied Humors, which, again, what a title. <laughs> but that actually has some really cool harmonies, really distinct riffs mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that was kind of an issue on here where a lot of this is kind of that incantation again that early incantation apocalyptic riffing you know very much like those weird just sliding down and just strumming heavy and finding but, the but, next ugly note right but like bending as you as you go down the neck just bending everything Ugh. that's that's pretty much it so finding like distinct moments because when it comes down to the riffing in here, the guitar playing, it is predominantly tremolo riffing. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's pretty much designed to, you know, kind of create that big cavernous sound, that inescapable, I'm being chased down by a mutant guitar spitting phlegm at me. That's at least the visual I got. But occasionally you get, you know, again, Death Doom breakdowns and some solid, just flat out riffy moments. Like in that one big word and then mind playing. <laughs> That one actually has some distinct <laughs> riffs on it. Yeah, I cheated. I don't give a fuck. I don't want to say it anymore. It's a tough word. The drum work on here. Um, I, first of all, I'm pretty sure that the drummer's drums have filed assault charges because he just beats the ever-loving piss out of it. And you can tell. Again, nothing is real high in the mix, so to speak. It's just this batch of noise. It sounds like crawling out of a compost heap in the middle of July. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe being attacked by hornets too. Maybe, uh, but the the drum work he just is full on just beating the hell out of the drums, and it, it's very punky. Yeah. And I think there's only like one or two places. There's once in the beginning and once in the end where he hits a D beat, and beyond that, it's just blast beats and just full on assault, and it never really lets up from that. But strangely enough, it's not like super static. Like his his yeah. blast beats are like kind of all over the place they're a little frantic like he's not hitting it you know like you know perfectly every time and yeah. that's kind of adds like a cool human element i really compared it a lot to tomb mold because their drummer yeah. is yeah. kind of like a punk drummer that loves death metal yep and it comes out in his playing because his playing is violent but it's really entertaining to watch and i get that same impression on this and that adds yet another kind of interesting layer to this because I don't know, it's it's a musical cacophony of noise and ugliness, and it's really driven more by the atmosphere than, I think, the riffs. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. They do such a good job of creating... What they create? What they create. Or summon. They probably summon something. I swear, now, this is the kind of band that turns on the smoke machine just to practice. This is, you know, just, they, they want the evil feel at all times. And uh, they did a really good job. I think this band only plays morgues, crypts, and maybe haunted houses, because venues are for posers. <laughs> this is just that kind of brutal and yeah. evil sounding. And while I think it's really cool that it really just keeps this just horrible feeling throughout it. Like, you don't feel good after no, listening to this. Too, like and the, you shouldn't. The whole time I just was like, Ugh. Ugh. But it does get a little static, and it kind of takes a lot for certain things to stand out. Now, you do have, like, some interesting interludes uh, between Engorged Realms, which is uh, probably one of the most melodic offerings on here. It's the sure. isolated, cleaner guitar, and then Quite possibly the saddest lead tone I've heard. <laughs> it sounds like the guitar is sighing. And yeah. again, even when this is like this little clean interlude, it still sounds evil, dank. It, it sounds like sobbing in a dark room in the throes of depression and your snot is green and you smell bad. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's really 
I've been there. Yeah, Shit. no one likes you. On to the next song. And then the last track, The Glory of Woe, pretty much pays the closest homage to Sabbath that they possibly can. It kind of rocks that tritone from Black Sabbath, the song. Yep. But then it kind of leads into other territory. Like, it has, like, a kind of a groovy chug, and then all of a sudden things start fading in and fading out, like... You hear the guitars fade out, the bass and drums come up. The bass and drums, and, the, and, and whatever the bassist is doing, I don't even know what he's doing because it, the, it's so low. It's just like a, a warbled sound of gunk. It's just turning yep. the pegs yep. on him. And he's just, right, and he's just doing whatever, and like the drums are there playing this little somber beat, and then that fades out, and then the acoustic guitar from the uh, interludes comes back in. And again, with no real signs of hope. No, actually hopelessness is the most positive emotion that you could probably get out of this. Because again, everything is dank and just uh, loaded with misery and evil. Yeah. And props to them for achieving that all yeah, throughout no the shit. album. Like there, there really are no breaks on this album just in terms of them beating you over the head with bleak death doom breaks and blast beats and Tremolo riffs of plenty, but again, I think some of the stuff is lost in the madness. And I mean, I don't think this is quite as good as the like, contemporaries, the ones that kind of do this sound sure. again, like Incantation, Drawn and Quartered. I think we're pretty much experts at this sound too. But this is really good, and this is kind of interesting in terms of like being more demo quality. Almost, I would say, it sounds just like a demo. Yeah, it feels kind of exposed to the world in terms of like, yeah, this is legit what we sound like. The only difference when you see us live is it'll be louder and there'll be a smoke machine. <laughs> that seems like that's pretty much it. But yeah, this was a really interesting, kind of cathartic and disturbing yeah. listen. Yeah. But I enjoyed it for the most I part. I did too. And the, I mean, maybe, you know. That says a lot about me, I think. We're, we're horrible people, I think. <laughs> so most of all the negative stuff we've said are actually kind of positive because I think that is what the band's going for. Yeah. And overall, I'm gonna give this three and a half stars. I dug this, this is twisted and dark. I do appreciate the riffier moments and some of the melodies. I gotta put up the air quotes because they're not pretty. But it's really good at creating and sustaining that atmosphere. The vocals add so goddamn much to it. it it's just one additional layer of creepiness on it that works so effectively. Play this all Halloween long and no kids are going to come up and ask you for candy, or they're not going to ask you for shit. They're going to be scared shitless. It's like a bad clown. <laughs> yeah, the most evil clown ever. What kind of clown are you? The crying on the inside kind, I guess. Yeah, don't worry. I'll eat a child and feel better. <laughs> but yeah, I strongly recommend checking this out. If you're a fan of Incantation, Drawn Quartered, especially anything like that, Yep. definitely check this out. It's gross as hell, and I enjoyed it. I'm going to give this a four. I actually, I really dug this album, and it, it's not so much that, that really that you could pick out songs, it's more like the experience overall. It wastes no time going from beginning to end to create this massive, ugly, void of, of positive emotion, just vibe throughout the whole album, and it just keeps getting grosser and grosser, and personally, I like records that make you feel like you have to shower afterwards. It creates a whole experience. In the shower? Not in the shower. Oh, okay. The demo quality kind of got me at first, but actually, if you turn up the volume a lot on this record, it actually doesn't sound that bad. No, I, I think it makes um, it pretty well, yep. seeing what they're going for, I mean. Yep. And, a, and another shocker, I didn't know until you said it, that these guys are from, what, Atlanta? Yeah. Who knew that things were that dark and troubled in Atlanta? I think one of the bands that someone is a member of because I couldn't get through all of them. I think Father Befouled is one of them. So oh, that yeah, yeah, also yeah. makes a lot of yep, sense. Yep. But like Nick said too, if you, you know, like bands like Incantation and bands that are really good at making a, a gross atmosphere and a not so pleasurable yet pleasurable listening experience, this band is definitely no slouch in that area. Um, can't wait to see what comes next for them. Go out and buy this record. So if you enjoyed this review, 
give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out, click the link down below in the description. We also have a giveaway going on for when we hit 7,500 subs, which, which we are incredibly close to. We're close to the 72 mark. Actually, and it's it's pretty damn crazy. It was crazy thousands of subs ago. And that's yeah, no kidding. Still it continues to be crazy. It was crazy at a thousand, and then we hit two thousand. I was like, well, we've arrived. Let yeah. Me go ahead and get a monogrammed robe. <laughs> <laughs> get the towel set first. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. The, the robe's like ten thousand. And of course, we are extremely thankful to every single person yes, that has Thank you very much. Liked our videos, all that shit. It's, it's an amazing journey, and we continue to keep this journey going. But anyway, about that giveaway, we have eight CDs, including the new Cannibal Corpse with the ultra naughty cover on it. And uh, we're gonna give all that stuff away. All you have to do to enter is comment on the giveaway video, which will be linked down below. And uh, we also have some shirts still available. We're gonna reload on them eventually, but uh, we still have some larges, extra larges, some two X's, maybe a small. Somebody just ordered one today. Well, hey. Effect. So thank We're you. gonna have to, yeah, restock here eventually. All you have to do is hit us up on thrallsofmetal at gmail.com, send us a message, put shirts in the title, and we will get back to you and hopefully sell you a shirt. So with that, we thank you all for watching and we will catch you later.